name is Beth Waddle, and uh, I can whistle like a bird. Really? Yeah. Do you want to give us an example of this? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I am Steve, and I really want to be DJ when I grow up in the music studio. Yeah, yeah. Your boy Eric, aka Tuki the Loke, man, straight from the tack. Nah, I don't know what I want to do yet, man. I'm, Hi, I'm so much Carla, stuff going for and I like being random. Oh. <laughs> I'm a music producer, um, a musician. I've been at this for, I hate to say, <laughs> 40 years. Okay, we're rolling. Kids get a chance to, uh, to record me. I'll sing and play, and we'll do some overdubs and do a multi-track recording session, and they get a chance to, to mix it and f feel how that all happens. We started this project probably in about 1996 as a partnership of arts and visually impaired audiences, which is a nonprofit organization that does arts access for blind people. And then we work with Department of Services for the Blind, and the idea was to bring students from around the state, high school students, and they live in a sorority house in the U District, and the and DSB places the students in different jobs over the course of a month or six weeks. So when we found out that DSP was going to be having a group of visually impaired students blocks away from us, we thought if we were going to do a project for blind kids bringing these organizations together, this was the perfect opportunity. Arrow up to track one. Voice, audio, track and then one. do the same thing, control AA. Okay. So now like, those aren't armed for recording. So the kids so get exposed to both a new technology which is accessible and designed to help them be able to do it on their own and get to meet and work with a blind musician and engineer. How are your headphones? They're fine. <laughs> They're fine. A lot of it is just to have fun. For some of those um, guys, it's the first time they've actually ever been able to record something themselves. Okay. And this big button right here is the volume. <laughs> and uh, I think that's an eye-opening experience for them. The advent of the, the Sonar Talking Program have really opened up a lot of doors for, for blind people. It, it just basically reads to you what's on the screen. And in fact, why don't you um, just hit play so we, can, so we can make sure that it recorded well. So just space bar for play. Jackstraw Productions, actually Jackstraw Foundation, was started in the early 60s uh, to begin KRB Radio, KRB FM, which was one of the first community stations in the country and was a uh, non-commercial, non-profit. So that was the, sort of the first half of our life. And for the second half, we started uh, Jackstraw Productions, which we opened to the public in 1980, 1989. We're a production facility and do all kinds of sound-based work. We run residency programs for artists and lots of projects for youth. So let's just have a practice. Okay. These kids have a really special uh, relationship with sound. And it's a relationship that I don't even have with sound. And I work with sound a lot. And they have no idea that being a sound engineer is a job. Or that being a voice artist is a job. You know, and I think it's really nice for them to be exposed to that. Too. I am Nick, Luke's sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Chester. <laughs> I could do that, actually. To know that you don't have to go and get whatever random job that you don't really like, that you can have a job doing something you're really passionate about. Because that's a cool idea with this, mm -hmm. because that would be cool with sound effects Because, and stuff. yeah, we, we can use all of the... Uh, technical cliches of the show. We always make a radio play every year. And we do it from scratch. That is, story idea, characters, scenes, everything made up, uh, basically, by the kids with the help of, uh, of uh, staff. They know about Chester because of the incident with the, uh, the phaser backfire. Mm -hmm. And so they figure out he's responsible for it. Oh, and boy, this isn't going to end well for me. Why, how can we get the dude with the funky forehead in there? 
Oh, What's his name? Worf. <laughs> See, uh, let me think. What we've been doing this evening is trying to figure out what our story will be and uh, then uh, get uh, the kids into the studio to start improvising the dialogue that will tell that story. Why is it a geek? Forget the stinking test. Amy, are you going to the party? Yeah, this is like 80% of our grade. Oh, I, I don't know. What about, I'm just going to think that maybe I would wear something I'm like this. Yeah. I'm not taking this. For, for, yeah, you know, forget like, about the stupid test. Well, like, you should test. not let you are. I'm in the morning, man. I'm not even tired. You just always look so cute. Whatever. Do what you want. I'm going to be ready for this tomorrow. And when you two fail, I'm going to laugh at you. Every night they ca they came to Jack's store and they were telling us. I said, well, well, you know, what's been going on at the sorority house? And they said, well, the fraternity next door is <laughs> having all these terribly loud parties and finding it hard to sleep. It's about these people who are in a Star Trek class in college and they're having to study for their final exam. So we talked about the fraternity. We talked about Bryson's love of Star Trek and it sort of all morphed into this strange piece <laughs> that we have before us. We've already got the F like duck in there, isn't that a oh, yeah. We're going to throw in some security alarms during that mayhem as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're very close here. Yeah, well, we've got some credits to record. Okay. Um, do I have a volunteer? Someone to read the credits. Credits. One of our students we hadn't known beforehand that she was autistic, and it was a difficult situation for her. She just was comp really uncomfortable. She just didn't want to do it, didn't want any part of it, and just, you know, let me out. Did not want to be, be part of that aspect. She was very nervous at first. Uh, she has good days and bad days with her, um, whether she feels like performing or not, which is pretty normal for a lot of kids. But um, she really today really surprised us. She said, I'll do the credits, and she recorded them, and she was really confident. Right, I'll oh. this up right here. And, right with you. And, and now, the Blind Youth Audio Project 2007 presents the world premiere of Geek vs. Greek. That was fabulous. <laughs> it was gradually drawing her out, giving her a sense of security, putting her in situations which she didn't feel threatened, and you know, two sessions later, she was in there in the studio making sound effects along with the other kids. You like making sound effects? Yes. <laughs> That's great. You got any more? It's those moments that make this project even better than it already is because you're just like, yes. It makes it all worth it. You know, because I mean, you really have to work hard to make a place like this go. And, and when you see a student or an artist or, you know, any of us, anybody, find themselves or, you know, feel like they've made even, you know, even if it's a small, uh, oh my God, you know, that's just worth everything. It's great, you know, makes you want to come and work in the morning.